Hello, this is a video on the Paycheck Protection Program. The Paycheck Protection Program was initiated by the federal government recently to help small businesses and nonprofits uh, pay their employees. My name is John Moore, and I'm a mission engagement advisor working with 1,001 new worshiping communities. And we're putting on this video in order to help you apply for the Paytech Protection Loan because we think it might help you fund your community during the next difficult months. The Paycheck Protection Program is a loan through the Small Business Administration designed to provide direct incentive for small businesses and nonprofits to keep their workers on the payroll. Once made, the SBA will forgive all the loans if all employees are kept on the payroll for eight weeks and the money is used for payroll, rent, mortgage, interest, or utilities. Congregations and worshiping communities with a federal tax ID number are eligible to apply and can apply through an SBA lender, which may be a bank, or a credit union or other lender. Now to find out more about this program, I recommend that you download the Paycheck Protection Program website. It can easily be found through Google. There you can download an application. You can get frequently asked questions. You can find participating banks and I suggest that uh, to you. So how do we go about getting a paycheck protection loan? You start by finding a bank, which may be the most difficult part of the whole process. The best bet is to go to a bank where the leader or somebody else in the community has a borrowing relationship. If you have a borrowing relationship with a bank, call that bank and make sure that they are processing PPP loans. Then you can go to them with confidence once you have the application completed. If you don't have such a relationship, then you can download the list of SBA lenders from the PPP site. This is an extensive list and it may help you first to list those banks in your area and cross-reference it with the loan that you down, with the list that you download. I suggest you identify a bank and a banker that agrees to process your loan before you begin filling out the application. Now, you can borrow up to two and a half times your 2019 average monthly payroll amount. Your payroll amount is, includes wages, tips, housing allowance, health insurance, retirement, and state and local taxes. Put all that together and that becomes your payroll cost. You take that payroll cost times two and a half to get the maximum amount that you can borrow. And once you have received the funds, uh, they must be spent to retain employees and to maintain your payroll. You can also spend that money on mortgage interest payments, lease or rent payments or utilities. You just need to make sure that 75% of what you spend goes to the payroll costs of your organization. Now, how is a loan forgiven? <clears throat> the loan will be fully forgiven if the funds are used to pay these items and if 75% of what you get in a loan is used for payroll cost. Payments on the loan will be deferred for six months and no collateral or personal guarantees are required. Neither government nor lenders will char charge a fee for you to get this loan. 
the loan has a maturity of two years and an interest rate of 1%. So that's a basic overview of the loan. Now let's talk about the application. And if you'd like to stop the recording right now and go ahead to the PPP site and download the application, I'll be glad to walk with you through it to help you get it together. So let's talk about the application. This is the information required to get the loan. And in addition to the application, there are four documents that are required. One document is a financial statement that verifies your average monthly payroll from 2019. The second is a list that provides the number of employees on the payroll. Third, a financial statement that projects the cost of payroll, mortgage interest, rent, or lease payments and utilities for an eight week period after the loan is received. And finally, an addendum that claims your exemption from something called affiliation rules. Affiliation rules are such that worshiping communities would be exempt from them. And there's an example of the exemption in an addendum on the SBA and the PPP site. So use that addendum to claim your exemption from these affiliation rules. Now let's look at the application. At the top, there are some boxes you need to check. You need to check the box that says 501C3 nonprofit. Now, you may not be a 501C3 nonprofit, but for a worshiping community or a congregation, if you have a federal tax ID number, that's the box that you check. If you don't have a federal ID tax number, then you can't apply for this loan. Next, you put the name of the community, the address of the community, probably the leader's address, the name, of the contact for this loan, probably the leader, the email and business phone for the contact, and the tax ID number. Once you've done that, you're ready to calculate the amount that you can borrow. In the first box, there's an average monthly payroll. You put the 2019 average monthly payroll number there. The next open box is after you have multiplied that number times two and a half. You can go ahead and ignore the language that says EIDL. In the next box, you put the number of employees. The next section is called applicant ownership, which does not apply to a nonprofit. Then you have questions, one through eight. Go through those questions and answer them honestly to the best of your, your ability. And uh, you will find that some of them definitely have to be no's in order to get the loan, um, but it explains it completely so you know. The one box that you want to check as yes is number seven. And that's the one where you state that all your employees are residents of the US. Now turn the application page over. Here you will find certifications and authorizations. The certifications are things that you are certifying that are true about your community and about how you're going to use this loan. So go through look at the certification checklist, and then initial those certifications where it says you need to initial. And finally, the authorization is your signature at the bottom. Your signature 
your name, date, and your title. Once you've done this, call your banker and take them the loan. Remember, you have to take four documents with this application. A financial statement that verifies your average monthly payroll for 2019, a list that provides the number of employees on the payroll, a financial statement that projects the cost of payroll, mortgage interest, rent, lease, or utilities for the eight week period after the loan is received, and that addendum about affiliation rules, which is found in the PPP website. Now, if you have any questions, please email me at jon.moore at pcusa.org. Thank you very much for being part of this Paycheck Protection Program video.